A note to listeners, the following podcast contains content that may not be suitable for all audiences. Thank you for joining us for this bonus mini episode of Lisk, Long Island Serial Killer. When we spent time with Dave Schaller, Amber Costello's former Long Island housemate, he alleged that he warned Amber and her sister Kim about the dangers of prostitution. Dave used harsh words and graphic descriptions of what could happen to them, but it didn't matter. Amber would meet a fate worse than the one he describes here. How Amber started tricking in New York was me, Kim, and her had gone to the mall. And uh, we were driving back from the mall, and I guess her and Kim had spoken about this before. And I don't remember if it was Amber or Kim said, ask him what he thinks. And I remember being like, ask me what? And they were like, never mind, never mind. And I was like, what do you want to ask me? Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I got pissed, and I'm like, just ask me, because, you know, now it's fucking annoying me. And they said, have you ever heard of back pages or something like that? And I'm like, no. Or Craigslist? I was like, Craigslist, yeah. She said, do you know what an escort is? And I said, yeah, it's a hooker. Oh, no, 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 it isn't, you know. And I'm like, yeah, no, it's a hooker. They're prostitutes, they're whores. And they tried to sugarcoat it like I'm some idiot, like, telling me that that's not what it was. I was driving, and she said, what would you think if I started doing that? And I was like, I don't care what you do. I was like, I'm against it because I think it's disgusting that people actually go on there and pay for sex. I said, because you're a lowlife. You got to go You go sit in a car and get laid, catch a blowjob in a car with God knows what you're picking up. I was totally against it. At this point, you know, me and Kim were really that cool. So Kim said, what would you think if I did it too? And I was just like, I could care less what you do at this point. And they started this whole big spiel about how, oh, it's not sex. And I'm like, I didn't just fall off the turnip truck. Oh, no, most of them just want dances or they just want to watch you strip. Yeah, 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 strip and sit on their penis, you know? Like, I mean, like, that's the way I put it to them. They were trying to sell me on, like, that it was a good idea. And I'm like, it's not a good idea. It's a disgusting thing that should not exist. I hated it the whole time they did it. It's degrading. I don't understand how women could do it. I don't understand the men that would pay for it. Because if, in all honesty, you meet a girl, you go out on a date, you go to have dinner, you go to a movie, and maybe you go home and have some sex. Well, that girl must be a prostitute too because you paid all night and then you got laid. So you basically paid to get laid. Why do you have to pay for sex from somebody you don't know? Go out, meet a girl, be a normal human being. You know, if you don't get laid, what's the worst case scenario? You maybe find a nice girl and you go out on a couple dates and eventually it leads to it. All right, so that's great. Why well, pay for it and perpetuate the cycle of this disgusting shit? I hate it. I, I st- whenever I start talking about it, I get pissed. I think it's just low life shit. The people that I've seen that were coming, man, most of them were just skis bags and fucked up people. And Amber's Johns came in all sizes, too. Here Dave talks about a time when he and Amber's boyfriend, Bear, had to stop an oversized sleaze bag from hurting Amber in their own home. There was one guy who came, and uh, he was a monster, like Frankenstein. And uh, he wanted more than what she was willing to do. And it started to get to where he was grabbing her and stuff. and. She screamed, we came out, and it was an all-out brawl, you know, to get rid of this guy. I mean, this guy was about double my size, so it turned into basically like the Royal Rumble. You know, it spilled out the front door, over the front porch and railing, you know, into a whole big fight on the front lawn. Dave was able to rescue Amber on that occasion. But it was the evening that he was unable to steer her in the right direction that still plagues him to this day. At that point, I was like, I couldn't even imagine this ever happening. It's a shitty feeling. One of like, you have no control, you can't do nothing. And that's not being able to have any control of the situation and not know where your friend is to help them. It's a shit feeling. You get a lot of feelings, you know, guilt and just all that shit came back, man. It's like, you feel like a a sense of like you're responsible for it in a way, but you're not. But there is that sense where you're like, did I drop the ball? Because I listened to somebody else's rules, you know what I mean? Like, who the fuck is that guy? Thank you for listening. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, and review as it helps others find us. And you'll hear from us soon with Lisk, Long Island Serial Killer, this Wednesday. April 8th.